Hi, I'm GM Comfortable Gray. I'm going to show you how to download and install my simple world building hack for Daggerheart. First, you're going to need to go to the GitHub repository. This is my first time using one. And you're going to need to download the zip anywhere onto your computer. Then you need to make sure that you have Foundry installed. I'm using version 11 that could come up. Install the simple world building system. And then make sure you have the list of modules installed as well. Then you need to make a world in Foundry using the simple world building system named Daggerheart. When you're done, close Foundry and go to your Foundry data folder. Then you're going to overwrite this Daggerheart folder with the contents of the zip that you just downloaded. Replace the files in that destination and your world should be good to go. Now we're going to boot up Foundry and we see our world here. When you click on it, it's probably going to ask you to migrate. You're going to want to do that. Bring it up to the current system you're in. Because I've been hosting a lot of games on the Foundry Forge, I haven't wanted to risk breaking some of my worlds by updating lately. Hopefully sometime I'll have a nice rest where I can update my entire world and organize a bit as well. Then join your world. There are no passwords for any of these users by default. And now you're in the world. So basically what you're going to have to do, once you have your players in the game, open your templates, Find out what class they want to play, duplicate one of these. Let's say we're going to have a bard. Drag that into the player characters folder. Right click it, configure ownership, and then make whichever player that's going to be the owner of that. That way they can actually manipulate it. Then they'll be able to open their character sheet, edit it, and drag over any of their selection options. They can also go to their attributes and put in their standard array. They'll probably need you to upload their character portrait. Just go ahead and have them send them an image file. Should be no problem. Two game master features I have here are the fear dice and the progress clock. They have their own embedded macros, but you can also find them on the hotkey for the game master. And as your players increase your fear points, you can update it. It's going to update its name, but people can just mouse over it. Fear points are supposed to be a publicly available resource, so anybody should know how many there are. Same basic idea for the progress clock. Just going to automatically update once you click on this. You just need to make sure that the tokens are pulled onto the current scene. Otherwise, it's not going to update the name. It's local to whatever tokens on the scene, but the attributes are global. So you don't have to worry about losing them as you change scenes. And then from here, I'm going to be showing you the different animations and other small things that could help make this the best session zero of your life. So first, let's go to the actors tab and you see it prepared a GM comfortable gray character. Now we're going to need to assign that to the players. That's going to be in the bottom left, just like last time. We can either go from the canvas and double click on the token, or we can go to the actor menu and double click on the actor. And this is the completed level one character. I've updated things a little bit from the last video just to increase the ease of use. Most things we're going to manipulate from the items menu. And so I'm just going to go through each of these and show you the different effects I've created. I'm going to make sure that I have my token selected by left clicking on it. Then I'm going to mouse over and hit T to target this bandit over here. I have it selected from both my GM screen and my spectator screen. And so on whatever screen I'm on, it's going to be for those little corner arrows. And then you can also see who else is targeting it by the player's colored dot at the top of that token. But this won't be necessary for the arcane sense. So we're going to start by going through the class features the domains, the subclass features, and then the weapons. I haven't activated animations for all of the class features and domains, but I have for all of the weapons. So with Arcane Sense. Just a nice, little, beautiful thing. For beast form, I had to make individual items for the different potential beast forms. I again only made them for level one. So when you click on it, it's going to automatically adjust your character's abilities and it's going to cover the token up with a little bit of art for it. You will have to manually remove any shield your character has. Then you can click it again and it's going to remove it. Here's the Aquatic Scout. Here's the Pack Predator. And it doesn't necessarily need to be a rabbit, a fish, or a wolf. It could be something within that. It's all the problem. Next one is the Minor Illusion. I just have a create a template there and you can make it whatever kind of illusion you want that's appropriate for your game. Then you're going to left click and I just have it create an illusion sigil there and you can kind of use your imagination for what it actually is. It's only a visual illusion. I figure this eye sigil is the most appropriate one. 
you need to trust your players for macros like this because in theory they could be placing illusions all over the place and it could really mess things up if you wanted to delete the illusion you need to go to the left side for the sequencer layer from here you go to the top select the effect and then just press delete to get rid of it if one of them get macro crazy open up your sequence manager it's going to show all the persistent effects that are present go ahead click and all effects and be careful you don't want to do this if you have other macros you have present and you want to keep them going for prayer dice i don't have an animation but i figure i should still mention something about it this is one of those class features that I intentionally left a blank in the character sheet so you could record these things. So at the beginning of a session, well, a number of d4 equal to your spellcasting attribute. That's not going to be more than two at character creation, and so it's very easy to slot this in. You only need to click on it once, it's going to automatically know what your character's strength is, and it'll roll that number. You can unfold the roll by clicking on it, and then you can see what the individual rolls were. So it's going to be a four and a three. Back to our items. Also make sure you've returned to token controls and selected your character's token. When just focus, it's just going to mark them. That way you know exactly who you're focused on. A wild touch, just a little nature magic. For press to digitation, it's going to cycle through the different arcane circles that they have in this game. So you can just click on it one at a time and you can describe what press to digitation you're actually doing, but it's going to look a little bit different every time. I think that's fun and exciting. Actual domains themselves don't have any items. You can just click on it, it'll give you a general description of what's within the purview of that domain. So we'll start with Bolt Beacon. Just a simple guiding bolt. The codices have a pop-up menu, and your character can select which one they're going to do. Power Push. Tava's Armor. Ice Spikes. Magic Hand which you can place anywhere your character is manipulating it. And then you'll need to go to the sequence menu, then click it and then drag it around if you want to move the hand around, or you can have somebody delete it and then activate it again. And then we go on to the weapon animations. Range is largely abstracted in this game. Most of the weapons are gonna have a melee range. Some of them have a very close range and same thing if you throw something like a dagger, then it could also be at very close range. Then a few of them will have close range, very few of them will have a far range, and I think only one or two of them have a very far range. So we're going to start with the battle axe. Let's target this giant rat next to us, then show it what for. Swing the battle axe. Then why don't we make our trait check for strength, rolling our duality dice. And this would have been a failure with hope. Because it's a failure, we won't roll damage. This is going to continue on with these melee weapons first. Great sword. Rat has a difficulty of 10, which means we succeed with hope. We would increase our hope by 1, just by clicking on this macro. And then we can roll damage, which is the damage dice of the weapon, multiplied by your proficiency, so you'll roll that many dice, starting at 1, plus a flat modifier for some of the weapons. Which has the massive trait, so it's going to roll an extra dice, and then drop the lowest of them across your entire pool doing three damage. A very low roll, but my character isn't very strong. Fortunately, the giant rat only has one hit point and only has one damage threshold, and so it's defeated. Now let's move on to the bandit. Because I've shown the idea of rolling damage now, I'm just going to go ahead and show these animations for a halberd, longsword, mace, quarterstaff, apier, saber, Short Sword, Warhammer, we're going to go backwards for the very close range weapons. That's the whip, hit it a few times, glowing rings, or anything your character throws. That's just a quick preview of all the animations. These animations were made possible by the M macro, sequencer, and warp gate modules. You're going to need all of those if you're going to use my world. And these are still a work in progress. I'm going to tweak a few of them. And then if any of you are interested in having this world to try Daggerheart yourself using Foundry VTT, feel free to message me on YouTube, on Reddit, or on TikTok, and I'd be happy to share what I have for you. I've requested people do not publish VTTs for Daggerheart yet, but I kind of got started just so I could play it using my favorite system. It's because of 
little features like the animations that I really wanted to show this off and share it with you all.